All right, Maroon Sports Network, we are here today with week two recap. Okay, so we got a couple new ones to the fold here today. So Mr. Owen Stevens, Chance Todd, and Braden Hampton. Guys, thank you for joining us. Let's do a recap from last week first. You know, the first thing we talked about, and Chance, I'll talk with you since we, we had uh, uh, you on the broadcast last week, but, uh, you know, we really wanted Danville. But then it seemed like maybe Danville really wanted us because I reckon that they were throwing some heat, so we got shut out 5 nothing. So give yeah. me a little recap of the Danville game. Um, what we give up? Trey came out and pitched a heck of a game. Trey Hornsby? Uh, yeah, out in the cold. He came out and pitched really well for the weather that he pitched in. Uh, he, we gave up, what, four hits, two home runs that really cost us, which we played on their small field. So just they, to their advantage, and we could have used it to our advantage if we could have got our bats going, but we didn't. He come out and throw through Brady Baxter, right? Yeah. yeah, and he he was so throwing it all around the strike zone. I think he threw, what, eight balls on that one? Yeah. No walks. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Pretty he impressive. Okay, now I reckon this guy, if I'm not mistaken, I think Marshall told me he'd signed D1 with Marshall. Yep. Yes. So that's, that's pretty impressive, okay? And I also heard that uh, Dallas Davis was the man that saved us from a no-hitter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so what well, was Dallas, a solid single, or what yeah, did he do? Yeah, just up the middle, and then I think the next play rolled into the double play. Wow, I so, raced him just like that. Yeah. Okay, so Danville's got to be a front runner for the region right now. You know, if I'm looking at things and I'm looking at the schedule, you know, Danville's got to be right at the top, and I know we want to be where they are. Uh, so hopefully we'll meet again down the road and with different results, but we got a few things to work on between now and then. Well, now let's talk about the, the good old days. So I'll go over here to Braden Hampton. Braden, we came back and responded on Monday, and we shut McCurry Central out 14 to nothing. So what was sort of the highlights or, or the mojo of that game? So McCurry, we obviously came in, we were favorited by quite a few runs, so our main goal was to, uh, I was going with like to say, continue advancing, getting better at the game, and being a better team overall. So our mindset coming into that was kind of just, you know, come in, get, get business done, and let's have some fun. We did it. You know, I sort of feel sorry for a team like McCurry. They're an underdog to begin with, and then you come off a 5-0 loss. And you're not in such a good mood coming Monday, and you want to put some runs across the board yeah. and, and get back on, on the winner's circle. So, I mean, that set the tone. Then we'll flip right back to Owen, coming back the next day, and this was, you know, Marshall's big game. Marshall said, I want to dominate our in-county opponents, and I want to play Southwestern, and that's yeah. who he's looking forward to, and we put a 12 goose egg on them. So we'll talk about the Southwestern game. Yeah, uh, I think we played really good. Uh, we didn't beat ourselves. We had a lot, a lot of hits. Our pitching was great, and uh, we didn't have any errors, I don't think. Maybe one. But, uh, who are our star pitchers of the Southwestern game? Uh, who was that? Uh, I, I tossed the first yeah. two. In yeah, Braden started. He did really good. Uh, I think he let up uh, one run, maybe. No, they didn't score any. Oh, no. Braden, Braden pitched good. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I think we played really good because we didn't beat ourselves. Coach is always talking about how we just can't beat ourselves and we have to advance in the game and get better. So Now, was that a five-inning game or how long was the Southwest? Yeah. Five. Explain to the people that don't really know that much about baseball, how can you call a game off earlier than seven innings? So it's 15 – if you're up by 15 runs after four innings, yeah. it's run rule. It's over. If you're up 10 after five – it's Five or six. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If not, we're going the distance. Right. Going yeah. seven. Okay. And unlike college baseball or major league baseball, we've got seven innings in high school. So the game's a little shorter, fans. So get out there and watch them. Yeah. Games usually start at six o'clock as first pitch, correct? Yes, so we've got some games coming up here soon. We follow that game up and we'll go right back to Chance here. Chance, then we come out and we just murdered Lincoln. So they didn't put it on the app yet. Was it 13 0 or 13 3? 13 3. 13 3. So let's talk about the Lincoln game from last uh, night, a cold night. It was very cold. The wind was very cold, too. Um, last night was my first game back. I tossed the first couple innings, kind of knocking some rust off. Um, I really loved our energy last night. Our energy was through the roof last night. It was the best energized game that we have played so far this season. Uh, let's see, we hit the ball great last night, especially you. these weaker teams you don't face the best in pitching. you got to stay back on your back leg and – don't chase the ball, which I'll admit it, I do it sometimes too. You get too happy and try to swing out in front of your front leg. Uh, we played a really good, fundamentally sound game last night too, I would say. And then we had uh, Wesson toss his first few varsity innings last night. He 
He pitched very well. And Jay Sprout, he came in and finished it up for us. Wow. Okay. So we got a plethora of pitching this year. Yeah. You know what I like? We look at the last three games and we've outscored our opponents 39 to three. So that's flat domination. I have to make you guys feel good over that. I was talking to Keaton today in class. Keaton or Dallas, you know, I don't know what to call him ever because he said I'll do both of them. But anyway, Dallas was telling me, and I'll say Dallas because I love the Dallas Cowboys. But Dallas was telling me that he said, man, he said, I was never so happy to come out of a game last night than, than in my whole lifetime because he wanted to get warm and throw his sweatshirt on yeah. in the dugout. So he said it's a good thing we blew him out so I could just come and have a seat. So I don't know how you guys felt about the wind ripping through you last night. Yes. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't a bad temperature, but the wind made it feel like it was probably in, in the mid-30s, upper yeah, 40s. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's pretty it, cold. it was definitely cold out there. Guys, today we're going on the road. You're going to my alma mater. You're going over in the mountains. You're going over to Manchester. So that's James Murray territory. You know, if you yeah. mention my name, you may get out alive. So keep that in the back of your mind if something goes haywire today. Uh, Brandon Crawford's going to be a really good hitter and pitcher. Brandon's dad and I were friends in high school, so I know Brad, his dad, very well. Uh, so you got your work cut out for you because they got a lot of returning starters back from last year. And I think Crawford's nationally ranked, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken with things, because his dad's always posting stuff on Facebook about home runs and hits and this and that and the other. So give us your thoughts tonight. I'll start with Braden. Give us your thoughts on traveling to Clay tonight. What do you expect? And uh, uh, give us a prediction for the game. Um, well, I think Trey's on the bump, right? Yep. And Trey's been pitching phenomenal lately, so I'm expecting him to come out throw just as he does. So I think it'll be a relatively low scoring game in that aspect. And from what I remember, I think that Crawford did pitch the other day, maybe last night actually. So they, they're not going to have their ace and maybe their number two as well. So they're going to be pitching someone that's not their top two, obviously. So. We're hoping that we can jump out on them and Trey will just lock them down. So, my, I've had to give a prediction four to four to three. Four to three, PC, right? Yeah. Okay, works. let's go to Owen. Owen, same thing. What do you expect to not out of the game and give us a prediction? Uh, I don't know. It's a long trip up there, so I think we're just going to get on the bus. Listen, Owen, one hour and five minutes you can be parked and off the bus. <laughs> and, and I know, I made that trip many a time, so I'm not going to say it's a long trip. Nah, it, it ain't too bad, okay. but we're going to go up there, we're going to kick some butt, you know. Uh, I think Trey's going to throw great because he's thrown in the cold and he just does just as good as anybody out there. Uh, I say it's going to be seven to us. Wow, okay, bringing the heat. Okay, I like it. Oh, okay, Chance, how about you? Uh, like Braden said, I'm pretty sure they threw their top two guys last night against Whitley County, and Whitley County threw their ace, which we have on our schedule for tomorrow. So that's going to be a big factor in the game, I feel like, because we have Trey on the mound. He's throwing great, through great in the cold and Danville, other than those two hits which were probably not even home runs, but Flops, on that topic. Parks, okay. yeah. And uh, I feel like we're going to go over there. We have something for them. They beat us on our field last year and beat us there last year. Uh, two close games, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're going to come out. I'm going to go 6 for us. Six for us. You know, one thing I like about your baseball and softball most of the time, it's always home and away. So I like that you get to see the team twice. That if something goes wrong the first time, then you know maybe next time you get Clay's ace. Who knows? But today we got Trey going out on the mound. And will you guys sort of tell me our pitching rotation? Like for instance, who generally gets the start? How, what's our order of pitchers generally? Uh, basically, it depends on how many pitches you throw. But usually you have one start a week. But Braden got out of the Southwestern game. Um, he might get the start tomorrow yeah. at Whitley County. So if you keep your pitch count down and we get on top fast you're done, you can have another start at the end of the week. So what's the general rule in baseball? How many pitches are you allowed to throw? It's 125 and you have to be done. At the pitch, 125. 125 a week right. is the max. Right. Or per game. Per game. Yeah. You're yeah. usually yeah. trying to keep it yeah, sub-80, though. Yeah. That's, if you go above 80, then you're going to end up five, six days of rest. But okay. if you can keep it below that, then you might be able to pitch twice a week, and that's what you need whenever. So, so that's why it's so important to throw strikes and not throw balls and get yeah. deep in the count. Yeah. Things. 
Okay, gentlemen, a couple last questions. We'll get you out of here because we know we've got Fellowship of Christian Athletes today, and you guys are all examples of that in the classroom and school. And, and man, what some great students here at Pulaski. I'm, I'm so unfortunate, and I can't wait to get out there and cover you guys from Maroon Sports Network. But, you know, we put up 39 runs here over the past three games, so I'm excluding the Damble game because it's still 39. But who has been swinging the hot bat here in the last three games? And also multiple people if we look at this, but who have you guys been impressed with, Owen? Uh, I think right now Jace Fry is the man. Uh, uh, I think he's, his batting average is around 600, so I think he's – That's uh, a, that's amazingly yeah, good. Yeah, Chance, yeah. same answer? I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to go uh, Mason Acton. Mason Acton? Uh, he's batting over five. Now, is he a now. sophomore? Yes, he's a okay. sophomore. Last night he was piecing the ball up everywhere. Sweet. He had two doubles. Three doubles. Three doubles. And then in the Southwestern game he was a triple off from the cycle. Wow. So he was – he's – that sounds like an excellent choice. I love it when we've got yeah. multiple ones. Okay, how about you, Brady? i got to go with Steve, too, Mason. He's okay. just been absolutely murdering the ball. Last night we thought he hit one ball so hard, I could have swore it was going 40 feet out, but the wind was blowing straight back, and it, it bounced off the wall, I think, and he ended up getting a dope out of it. Okay, guys, tell me a little bit, and I know I've got two pitchers in here. Owen, what do you play? Outfield. You're outfield. Yeah. So left, right, center. Yeah, anywhere else. Anywhere they want to put you for yeah. that particular game. Okay, so I'll talk to my pitchers then. I got two pitchers here. Pitchers, do you always get to hit or do we get to pull you for a pitch hitter in the game? Do you have to come out when you have a pitch hitter? Is it like it is in college or is it different? I'm what they call a PO, so <laughs> I don't I don't hit hardly at all. I get to have a little bit of fun whenever I don't pitch in J V and I get to swing back a little bit there, play some first base. But not, not You're a dedicated base. pitcher. Yeah, okay, yeah. Chance, I think you do both. I do both. I hit and pitch. So it depends, honestly, on the situation. But personally, when I pitch, I don't like to hit, but I also love to hit at the same time. So I like when I pitch, I like to have my mindset straight on pitching. But – I like swinging the bat, too, for our team here. You know what I think is a pretty cool thing about high school baseball? A lot of times you don't have just a Braden that's a pitcher and then maybe he sets out unless he's pitching. A lot of times your pitchers will then go play outfield, they'll play short, they'll play second, they'll play third, whatever the coach needs you. They'll mix you in and out, so you're playing every single day. Right. It's not like you're just playing that one day out of five or whatever. But it does it, it does make you learn multiple positions, but at the same time maybe you don't get really good at one position because we're moving you all over the field. But who knows? Right. Uh, so we got a lot of versatility for things. Okay, before we get off the air, I'm going to send you guys out of here. Owen, tell me one nice thing. We'll switch it up. Tell me one nice thing about Chance Todd. Uh, one nice thing about Chance Todd is uh, I'd say on the baseball field, he gets out there and just can mow him down on the pitching mound, and then he can go to third and just do just as good. Okay, one nice thing about Braden Hampton. Uh, he's funny. Uh, he's weird. <laughs> Very weird. <laughs> he, uh, he gets out there and he probably throws the hardest on the team. I mean, very talented arm. He has a really good swing, too, even though some people say he's a P.O. He hits him out at practice sometimes. Hey, so. Coach Mayfield, are you listening to this? <laughs> are you listening? Give our boy a shot. Give yeah. him a shot. Yeah. Let him pitch hit some of these games. Get ready to go up there. Owen, thank you for those comments. Uh, Chance, give us something good about Owen. Uh, he's a hard worker. He works his tail off in practice, and I've never seen him just have to do something. He's always 100% in practice. Coaches love that. I'll okay. tell you, coaches love that. One good thing about Brady. Well, he's a great teammate. And then, I don't know, he, I say he's a lot like me when he's pitching. He's focused. You don't mess with him when he's getting ready to start pitching. Don't, you never mess with the starting pitcher. He's in his mode. You don't mess with him. And I, I feel like we have a lot in common, especially when we're pitching. So you guys just get zoned in and, and don't talk to me because I'm focused on the very next batter that's coming yep. up and I need to hit my pitch, whether, I mean, what curveball, fastball, breaking ball, whatever it may be. But yep. i got to be zoned in. I love it. Braden, last with you. Good thing about Owen. Owen, man, i got to say he was blessed to be left-handed. So, or I guess he throws right-handed, but he swings left-handed. And I I just love left-handed swing. It looks so good. You know, Steve's got it, too. I, I got to stop talking. Steve, Mason's called it. Mason, Mason swings well, left-handed. Steve's his nickname for yeah, baseball yeah, team, Steve. right? So I'll just call him Steve. So, yeah, like I mean, Steve. just left-handed, it's – it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, when we get ready to call a game, I want to need nicknames for all of you anyway, oh, yeah. so we've already got oh, yeah. Steve's. Yeah. All right, so last words. We're, we've got Clay, we've got Whitley, and then you got four games at Bardstown. 
And I don't know about you guys, man, a bus ride up there four days in a row, that's going to be brutal. So, Coach yeah. Mayfield, take these guys next year to Florida or Alabama or Georgia or somewhere down south, and let's get us some good weather because Kentucky could be 80, could be 40 the next day. You mm -hmm. never know. Oh, yeah. So I hope you hit some good weather at Bardstown, but you're going to do a lot of bonding on that bus ride up and oh, back yeah. for four oh, different yeah. days. So you better have that music list ready to go with things. And uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. Have a happy spring break. And anything you want to say about your fans, because I'm going to be out here. Mr. Murray's going to be out here for your Cumberland County game on Saturday, April the 9th. Mr. Murray will be there to watch with hopefully Kevin Hampton, my buddy. Uh, but any last words before we get off there? Hey, we did get your press box put up. Sweet. Oh, yeah, press box it. is there. It's nice. It's nice. Oh, all right. We're over and out. Thanks, oh, yeah. guys. Thank you. Thank you.